Hello Brain Bashers. Here we are. We're looking at an episode. Looking for harmony. The allegory within an allegory. A dream within the dream? Question mark. McGowan said, I wanted to do a Western. I'd never done one and they'd never made a Western in England and we were short of a story. Here we go. At the darkest hour, the glimmer of light. This is a tale born of desperation. There was a commitment to an agreed number of episodes, but you need scripts. At the outset, a number of those were either complete or in preparation. Now, the situation had pressing urgency. From this yawning vacuum, the stars somehow miraculously aligned and it resulted in an even more adventurous, creative and experimental departure from the format that was devised at the outset. It also demonstrated that the major themes of the prisoner were not confined to the village, but were in fact universal. In a series that was departing from one based on reality, it was fast becoming ever more allegorical. And this episode cleverly employed this device once again within that structure. The episode itself hinges on the moral arguments for and against the use of violence in extreme circumstances. As the series has unfolded and matured, the central premise of escape has evolved into the prisoner now scoring victories over his captors. This episode marks a number of successive triumphs. This is because the prisoner has grasped how both escape is seemingly impossible, coupled with his growing understanding of the way the village operates, allowing him to better exploit its weaknesses. In addition, apart from both startling and intriguing the viewer, we are encouraged to question the themes of reality, ethics, conscience, and also embracing comment on the topics of allegiance and censorship. What a total viewing audience of some 9.3 million for that episode saw was a good, solid, well-written, well-produced, and well-directed story in a genre, the Western, that had enjoyed a high profile since the birth of film. This genre was currently experiencing a resurgence, even as the craze for spies was taking center stage, after which with Star Wars, the time of the Western faded and sci-fi would replace this genre with its wide spectrum of plot possibilities and would point the way to the future. Living in Harmony, was up there with some of the best. Apart from cracking, paired to the bone dialogue, accomplished acting from McGowan, and a hypnotically intense performance from Alexis Canna, the Sergio Leone, you remember the dollar films, the Sergio Leone influenced atmospheric direction, authentic clothing and props, the storyline gripped. The real challenge, getting us back into the village was handled cleverly in a twist that genuinely surprised and worked. The wonder was that its feature film quality, which would usually take months of production time, belied the swift TV schedule of mere weeks. In conclusion of this short brain bash, although far from the original intended vision, and very much outside the parameters that have gone before, this episode succeeds in both retaining and encapsulating the spirit of the series. It also explores a number of the deeper themes and ethical considerations, such as the courage to be true to one's conscience and persecution of the outsider, which are all far more overt here, whereas usually expertly buried in a number of the previous episodes. It asks the viewer not only to question what they see, but also challenges them to both question and affirm their views, exactly what McGowan intended. Nevertheless, this cannot be considered one of the fundamental 
essential, more profound episodes, but it's a nice try. On my bariometer scale, it gets three stars. On the one hand, it's true to the vision, as I've said. On the other, how we miss the village environment. Consider free for all. McGowan set the bar high. So here's a few points to ponder for you. In your view, does a Western fit into the prisoner format? Number two, what does this episode say about the pressure to conform? Number three, this episode was not screened in America upon its first transmission. Now, at the time, the States was fully engaged in the controversial Vietnam War. It was a very sensitive issue, perhaps the draft most of all. The crux really is, should an individual fight for his country, even if they believe the cause unjust. You can see how that might play in the States. Living in Harmony dealt with this issue directly. Now the wrongly perceived view was that transmission would inflame, hence CBS's decision not to screen. The, what, what do we call it, the kind of, the rumour mill, um, the uh, legend that gets out urban myths first of all it was believed it wasn't shown because of the use of hallucinogenic drugs well there are in a number of other episodes so no then it was because of the vietnam war and the western and the sensitivity i mean the western is pretty close to home in america isn't it but in fact it was shelved for another reason altogether a combination they had to lose an episode because Bobby Kennedy's funeral had overrun a few weeks before. At the same time, the week that they had planned to show this episode, there had been an incident. And this is narrated by the program executive of CBS, Henry Coleman, in an interview that he gave for the Television Academy founded 1997 on oral history. Alas, he cannot remember exactly what it was, but he said something happened that week and to show a Western with someone being hanged, we felt was not the right thing to do. So I assume that someone committed suicide in some, some way. In the chapter I'm writing on this, I talk about the Western and I talk about what censorship is. There was a film that was made in 1915 called Birth of a Nation, which continues to this day to be the most controversial film in American history. There's a case for it to be banned. It depicted the rebirth of the Ku Klux Klan. It was about the Ku Klux Klan, the founding of it at the close of the Civil War. And the makers, D.W. Griffith, the director, filmed this and the Ku Klux Klan were depicted as heroes and it led to the movement re-emerging. In one particular notorious scene, whites blacked up are seen as Negroes predatory towards white women hugely controversial so we we like to think things we shouldn't have censorship but do you think there's a case for censorship or not where does one draw the line here's some things to think about seek out and watch the following westerns where the theme of the hero refusing to pick up a gun is intelligently explored Destry Rides Again, 1939. The Gunfighter with Gregory Peck, 1950. Shane, 1953. The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, 1962. And of course, the very famous High Noon from 1952. And look at how each of the protagonists deals with this issue. Can non-violence ever trump violence? There is a film that I'd also recommend that has something very profound to say about picking up a gun. 
or not. It's not a Western, it's a recent film from 2016, and it's a true story. It's called Hacksaw Ridge. I recommend it. The final thing that I'm going to talk about is the very theatrical deaths of the two protagonists. Um, and this kind of preempts what's going to happen in a later episode, Once Upon a Time. <clears throat> it's to do with what I call, or what's termed, counter-transference. Do the deaths of numbers 88 and 22 presage the titanic struggles of wills by number six and the prisoner in Once Upon a Time? Because here, we, as does number six, become aware of everything that we've seen is an illusion. We've shared his hallucinations. As in a number of previous episodes, drug drugs are used as a way of exerting psychological control. The other protagonists also appear to become so immersed that they can no longer separate illusion from reality. To participate, perhaps they too were fed the same drug. Or is it what psychologists call counter-transference? In therapy, if the therapist is not careful, the patient's characteristics, which may or may not be weaknesses, can be transferred to the therapist. All are drawn back to harmony here, for it is the village that is the nightmare. Everyone has been deeply affected emotionally by the experience, fact and fiction blur. So this leads to the very theatrical deaths of both 22 and 8. And it can cause us to further question what we've seen. However, this episode can be interpreted as allegorical, a dream within a dream, which makes perfect sense if it's the thoughts of the prisoner as he speeds down the runway intent on resignation. And think of once upon a time and the transference. Perhaps this is this presages what's going to happen counter-transference. Thank you for watching again.